So what is it with New York and its politicians? The problems surrounding New York City Mayor Eric Adams are quickly mounting. The New York City Police Commissioner resigned one week after the FBI seized his phone as part of a federal investigation that touched several members of Eric Adams' circle. The police commissioner said in an email that he made the decision to resign after, quote, the news around recent developments had created a distraction for our department. For those who missed it, last week, federal agents searched the homes of several senior officials in Adams' administration, including the police commissioner, two deputy mayors, and a senior advisor. It still remains unclear what the subject of the investigation led by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan is, and it's unclear if Adams himself will be indicted. He has denied any wrongdoing. There are now a minimum of three federal probes into Adams and his administration per slate. One is looking at whether Adams and his campaign conspired with the Turkey government, another on top city hall officials, and the third includes Kaban. In other New York corrupt politicians news, the New York Times is reporting that former Governor Andrew Cuomo's legal bills have cost New York State $25.4 million. As of last month, the state spent $25 million representing Cuomo's legal interests and several of his top aides as they fend off their criminal investigations and civil complaints. Now, of course, a judge ruled this. Cuomo argued that Letitia James uh, was wrong in denying him state assistance because this is when, you know, he was acting within his duties, serving as governor. A lot of these complaints. So a bit of an official acts ruling there. And it turns out the judge sided with Cuomo, agreed that the state had to cover those legal fees because they were when he was doing his duties as governor. Just the New York, New Jersey politicians, man, they're getting sleazier and sleazier, Amber, from gold bars to Chinese influence, paying for sports cars. It's getting bad. It is quite bad. I mean, you're right. There's the Bob Menendez trial that just took place. He's now resigning from his Senate seat. His wife has pleaded guilty in those charges. Uh, we have the probe into Eric Adams' ties to Turkey. He's basically accused of something quite similar to Bob Menendez. He was accused of taking bribes on behalf of Egypt. Uh, Eric Adams, it seems, is accused of taking bribes on behalf of Turkey. People who have covered his administration and even before he got into the governor or the mayor's office have suggested he had an unusually close relationship with the country. We have Kathy Hochul with one of her top aides charged as a Chinese spy. Um, and then, of course, Andrew Cuomo appeared in front of the House COVID Select Committee this week to testify about his administration's nursing home order during the pandemic, which he claims was totally in line with CDC recommendations, which he claims they totally didn't undercount the deaths. And if they did, he had nothing to do with it. Now the report says that his fingerprints were actually all over it. And he personally edited the memo where they undercounted the deaths. It really is just an et cetera when it comes to all of these New York politicians and their seeming legal and moral troubles. Yeah, so now we have, you know, Jessica Ramos running for mayor against Eric Adams. He's saying that, you know, his administration is distracted by all of this stuff that's going on. Are they distracted by the legal response to the stuff that's going on or the stuff that's going on is the question that I have. You can't run a successful administration in New York with this much controversy. This is exactly what happened to Cuomo when he decided to step down. Uh, it was him specifically that was the guy who sexually assaulted women when he was in office, including a state trooper. It's totally on him. But Eric Adams has been swirled in controversy as well. It's not as extreme as Cuomo's. But it's getting there. And I think that this is the type of stuff that could absolutely hurt him and cost him the mayorship. And uh, we have very funny de Blasio posts to thank for or uh, as a thank you for dealing with all of this rather. And he's just minding his own business, posting photos of him living his life, saying, you guys miss me now, don't you? And so everything that's going on in New York, it's a little bit funny, but it's just concerning that in the largest city in America, we can't have a functioning government. We're spending more money on enforcing metro fares on the subway than we would collect in revenue if everyone paid the subway 
decide when they took it. At some point, we have to do a cost-benefit analysis on how the government is running in its various failing programs in New York and, you know, ensure that we have a functioning city in the largest city of America. And I just don't think Air uh, Mayor Eric Adams is the guy to do it. I don't think he's doing a good job. Even people who are, you know, di lifelong Democrats are like, this guy was a cop. We just don't like NYPD officers here. We don't like the decisions he's making. The taxes we're paying aren't going anywhere and it's getting more expensive to live here. So even aside from the controversy, I think Eric Adams is going to have a tough time holding on to the mayorship. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, even conservatives had an issue with Eric Adams when he was running for the mayor's office because uh, apparently the NYPD didn't like him so much and actually didn't even want to claim him. So he was a cop without getting any of the benefits that you might get politically from being a cop, apparently. And the crime numbers in New York have reflected that. The New York Post published a piece back in April where they actually obtained the internal NYPD, NYPD data and found that Eric Adams was wrong when he said that crime is down. In fact, overall crime was on the rise, driven by a historic surge in assaults, which near 28,000 for the first time in the city's publicly recorded history. Um, there was a, a increased number of major felony offenses, including murder, rape, robbery, assault, burglary, grand larceny, and car thefts, um, which are typically the metrics used to measure whether or not crime is up or down. And he also has struggled to deal with the migrant crisis. I mean, border states in the United States have for a long time been dealing with massive influxes of illegal immigrants. Mayor Adams got 10,000 migrants uh, about a year ago and immediately started crying that it was a crisis and that he needed federal intervention to be able to deal with them. So you're right, it's been an absolute failure in New York City. And I think a lot of people feel like the heyday of New York is really over and they're not even sure if the city can recover from all of the political corruption and scandal as well as just the fact that everyday life has gotten significantly harder for most people who live there. Yeah, and on top of this, Mayor Adams' speeches are just getting weirder and weirder recently. He said, I like Gandhi, I want to be like Gandhi, so now I'm like Gandhi. What is he talking about? Would Gandhi have raised New Yorkers' rents? Would Gandhi have pushed regulations that require windows to be in new bedrooms? There's just so much that's gone on in the New York housing market. You have people who are making dual income salaries, uh, $200,000 or more a year that can't afford an apartment because you have to have so much money saved just for a down payment, a security deposit. You have to pay a guarantor in the state of New York and you have to have a, a broker fee paid as well. And a lot of these you know, precautions that are meant to protect renters are serving in New York State and how they're implemented, specifically New York City, where this is more of a problem, uh, to prevent the landlord from having grounds to sue. Because once you get into that apartment, the person you've now paid a hefty fine to, thousands of dollars, is making sure legally that the apartment is fit for you and you've agreed the apartment is fit for you as soon as you get in there. So you don't have time to wait and see if there's roaches in it to see if anything's broken. It's a very fast process. And so essentially what a broker does is show up, show you the apartment and collect a percentage of your rent that is sometimes as high as 8% and I've heard up to 20%. And then you have the guarantor, which acts as someone who's providing insurance in some way if for whatever reason you don't pay rent. And so there's a chain of these corporate investors who own the units to the development companies who purchase them. And then they go down from that to the landlord and the management companies and then an additional guarantor. It's a, a chain of financial backing that is reminiscent of the financial crisis. And it's really concerning and it's making rent way too expensive for New Yorkers. Well, good thing Eric Adams says that they're just coming after him because there's a lot of, quote, chocolate in the administration. We'll be back with more Rising after this.